Here I've got a nice elementary geometry problem. So we're going to start with a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. Then on side AB, we'll pick a point P. On side BC, we'll take the point Q, which is along the ray starting at P, which is parallel to AC. And then we'll finish this off by picking R that completes this picture into a rhombus. So just to be clear, P, Q, C, R is a rhombus. Then our goal is to find the radius of this blue circle, which is inscribed in this upper triangle, which kind of lives on top of the rhombus. Okay, so let's maybe collect some of our facts and then we'll get to the argument. So since this is a rhombus, we know the opposite sides are parallel. So in particular, we know side AC is parallel to PQ, and we know side PR is parallel to BC. So again, that's because every rhombus is a parallelogram. Furthermore, all sides of a rhombus are equal. So that's kind of the definition of a rhombus is the special type of parallelogram. So let's introduce some notation for the length of the side of this rhombus. We'll use y. So we have y is equal to pq, which is equal to qc, which is equal to cr, which is finally equal to rp, because that represents all four sides of the rhombus. So next, we'll introduce another side length, and that'll be the side length of this upper triangle, maybe the altitude of this upper triangle, so PB. So let's set X equal to PB. Okay, next, because of this parallel condition, we actually get three triangles in this situation that are similar. So since PR is parallel to BC, we know this triangle sitting down here is similar to the large triangle. Then furthermore, since PQ is parallel to AC, we know this triangle sitting up here is similar to the large triangle and thus similar to this triangle. So in the end, we know that triangle ABC is similar to triangle PBQ and similar to triangle APR. Again, that's because of this parallel condition that we have right here. But now similar triangles have equal proportions of their appropriate side lengths. So let's make that application and see what that gives us. So we know that AP divided by AR, so that proportion of the side lengths happening in this triangle. So let's see, we have AP, AR, that'll be equal to AB, BC. So here we have AB over BC. Okay, but now let's measure each of these. So AP, well, we know that this guy up here is x. That's how we defined x. So that means this guy right here is three minus x. Furthermore, we know that this guy right here, rc, is y. That means this here is four minus y. Again, because the entire side length is y. So that gives us a proportion of three minus x over four minus y is the same thing as three over four. Now let's use similarity for one of the other ratios to find another equation. So in this case, we'll use the fact that AP divided by PR is the same thing as AB divided by BC. So let's see, AP, that's three minus x again, divided by PR, well that's y because that's one of the sides of our rhombus, equals AB over BC, but that's three over five because we have a three, four, five right triangle. So let's see what we have. This is a nice system of equations for X and Y, which can be solved pretty easily. So maybe we'll clear the fractions first by cross multiplying. So that'll give us 12 minus 4x equals 12 minus 3y. And then up here we'll have 
15 minus 5x equals 3y. And let's notice that this is set up for adding these two equations to cancel the y. So let's add these two equations and see what happens. So we'll have 15 plus 12, that's 27. And then we'll have minus 9x equals 12. Okay, so that's starting to look good. So that means we have 9x is the same thing as 27 minus 12, which is 15. We can divide both sides by 9 and then simplify the fraction a little bit and we'll get that x is 5 thirds. Then we can take this value of x and maybe plug it in anywhere that we want here and solve for y. I'll let you guys do that simple calculation, but what you end up with is y is 20 over 9. So now we have our values of x and y, and we're ready to move on to the next step. So we just got done calculating what we called x and y, which ended up being this side length here, which was 5 thirds, and then this side length here, pq, which was 20 over 9. Now we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find this length here, bq, and that's actually 25 over 9. That's not too hard to check. So from here, I'm going to maybe clean this up quite a bit, and then we'll zero in on exactly what's happening with this smaller triangle. We've zoomed in on our smaller triangle, which just to reiterate, has side length 20 over 9, 5 over 3, and 25 over 9. It's a right triangle. And now our goal to finish this off is to find the radius of the inscribed circle. And we'll do this by introducing a couple of more circles into this situation and then using a fairly well-known result. So the first circle that we'll introduce will be centered here, so at this vertex, and its radius will be the distance from this vertex to this intersection point where this comes from the center of the circle intersecting orthogonally with this side length. Okay, so let's get that picture drawn. Okay, so there we have it. And now let's put some measurements here. So if this is length r, so that's the radius of our circle, then this is also length r as well, just because we have a right angle here. And this is actually completing a square. Notice this is also length r. So there we've got a square with side length r. This entire thing is 20 over 9, which means what's left over is 20 over 9 minus r. So that's the radius of this circle, which is in blue. I've just given you a sector of the circle, though. But that means that this length right here is also 20 over 9 minus the radius. Now we'll introduce another circle that'll finish it off. And the last circle that we'll introduce will be centered up at this vertex. And then it will have a radius given by the distance from this vertex to this point right here, where again, this is a right angle. Okay, so let's get that circle drawn. Okay, there we've got it. Now we'll get a couple of more measurements drawn into this situation. So like we pointed out earlier, this length right here is r, this entire length is 5 thirds, so that means this bit left over is exactly 5 over 3 minus r. But since this, this is the center of the circle and this is an arc of the circle, that means that this length right here is indeed also 5 over 3 minus r. Now the really important thing to point out here is that these two guys intersect at a point. And by these two guys, I mean these two arcs of this circle. And that follows from a fairly standard result known as the exterior tangent result. Maybe put a little proof in the comments if you want to. Okay, but now we can measure this hypotenuse two different ways. This way with these two constructed circles or the way that we had it before as 20 over 9. That sets up a nice equation. So we've got 5 over 3 minus r plus 20 over 9 minus r equals 25 over 9. And now we've got a nice equation which is fairly simple to solve. So let's give ourselves a common denominator. So I can do that by multiplying this by 3 over 3. That'll give me 15 over 9 plus 20 over 9 minus 2 times r equals 25 over 9. Now let's see, that gives us 
35 over 9 minus 2r equals 25 over 9. Now we can move some things around and we'll see that we get 2r equals 10 over 9 or r is equal to, let's see, 5 over 9. And that ends the problem. That's exactly what we wanted to find, the radius of this inscribed circle. And that's a good place to stop.